I'm Stephen Stomsky. Today we're finally getting ready to actually time the cams on our 911 engine. So far, we've set this parallelism of the sprockets and the chains. We've set number one and number four intake and exhaust valves, the lash. We've installed our digital degree wheel and we've set top dead center. Now we're actually going to mount the dial indicator on cylinder number one intake and we're going to time time number uh, the, both the left and the right banks of our, of our, of our engine. We're going to use our SR098 cam timing fixture. You are certainly able to use the factory Z-Block to do this, but the Z-Block, the P207 tool, has a tendency to spin and it takes a little while to set the tool up. It's, it will allow your indicator foot to slip off of the valve, uh, valve spring retainer. Um, it's not quite as accurate or quite as easy to set up as our 098 tool and as you'll see the tool really really goes in place quickly. It's accurate, it's consistent, it's repeatable and uh, it's very very quick to set up. And from here we will be using a digital, a digital travel indicator. Uh, you could use this tool with any AGD style or even metric style with a sleeve indicator but we like to use the the digital gauge quick, quickly uh, convert from metric or English uh, to in inches or zero out the tool quickly. It's a, it's a quick tool to use, but uh, you can use any type of indicator with our SR098 uh, cam timing tool. We're also going to use a couple other tools, and we'll go through that as you, as you see we're, as, we, as you see us uh, set the timing. Uh, we already have our SR011 um, mechanical tensions in place, which allow us to set a pretty good tension on the chains to start with, uh, with the chains nice and taut. We don't have to worry about slippage. It gives you a little bit more of an accurate indicator of what the cam timing is and don't have to worry uh, so much about things sliding. Or this allows for more predictable and easier to set cam timing. The first time, for the first step now, is we're actually going to set the SR098 in place and uh, then from there, we'll start to rotate the engine. You'll see how quickly the tool goes into place. It's, since it bridges over the two studs, it indexes and, and, and is held in place predictably and constantly. Now we're good to go. That's how quickly it sets up. I'm going to zero out the, the indicator. We are at TDC. Z1. Um, from here, as this locked down the thumb screws, all thumb screws, and made sure that the gauge is, is secure. But since everything is indexed, the, the indicator foot goes down every time to the same spot on your, on your valve spring retainer. So you don't have to worry about it, an alignment or thing, the thing slipping off. It's held in place dead on each time. Our next step from here is we're actually going to start to rotate the engine. Now the first step is going to turn on our display for the Digidix and I'm going to start to rotate the engine. This is a 3.2 Carrera engine with factory cams. Cam spec is 1.1 to 1.4 with optimal range is 1.25 and that's in millimeters. Now the first rotation of the engine around. Now I'm going to zero out the gauge at this point. I'm actually going to look for 720 degrees from our original starting position. I'm watching our display come to 360. And it's 360. We're well past where we need to be. So we're at 2.69, which is well past where we need to be, but it's going to be quick and simple. Now, at three, the, back to zero degrees or top dead center, we're at 2.74. Our goal is actually one and a quarter. I'm going to back up cam so that we are at one and a quarter, ignoring for the time being 
just about one and a quarter. Ignore for the time being where we are on our digital degree wheel, our, our Now I'm going to break the camp, break the three. I'm using our SRO78 bushing in the factory P91 tool. And this allows to set an accurate torque without having to worry about the socket rocking on the end of the bolt and makes it a one man job and holds it predictably. Once you're free, I'm going to remove the bolt and washer from the end of the cam. And the first thing I do when I'm at this point is I usually just mark where we are with a Sharpie um, where we were so that we know as we go along that we don't go back into that hole later on in case it's close. I'm using our, our SRO26 to remove the, the pin and it, this allows to little bit of precision in removing the pin otherwise if you're using the factory tool and you jank, jank it off sometimes that the whole sprocket will pop off the end of the end of the cam. Now what I do is this rotate the engine and the cam is going to stay because we have such a such a torque on our mechanical tensioner and on the chain the cam will stay in place as I start to rotate the engine back to 360 degrees And now, find a pin, find the best hole to mount it in, and excuse the back of my head, and there it is there. Now, just to be complete, I'll put two hash marks there so I know that was the second spot. In case we have to take it off and start again, I'll know. Now, 88 foot-pounds of torque on here. It's uh, 110 for the earlier earlier cases with uh, with the nut. Now we're going to go through the phasing thing one more time here. Spin around. Make sure that we're zeroed out. And we are. And now... Watching the digital degree wheel come up. We're 250 degrees. 300 degrees. About 320 we're starting to come on cam here. And I'm going to just try to nudge up to 360. We're watching now we're at 350. And dead on, zero degrees on our digital degree wheel, and at 1.2, which was well within our range of 1.1 to 1.4. Now we're going to go over and do number. Uh, set up on number four and do the right cam. Now removal of the tool is pretty quick. Just go ahead and break the thumb screw free and remove your in indicator and then the two gold thumb screws spins off, spin off and you're off. And now we're going to go over and do number four. All right, installation is the same on the right bank as it is on the left. Just spin down. Indicator facing me, zeroed out. We're still all set on our digital degree wheel. Nothing's changed on that. I'm going to start to rotate the engine around, see where we come in. Same thing, come up on 125. And 
now. And I'm break it free. In the spot where I was and find Out of the engine back to zero. Somewhere thereabouts. Reinstall the pin. So now I find an open the most appropriate hole. And I'm gonna mark that one. Work this. And then now we're going to go through and just confirm our our settings for number four. Intake, go to the back side of cam, we're zeroed out, which is great. Now come back around. I'm going to creep up on 360 to see what our, our new mark is going to be. One point two six dead on, right within range. So there you have it, that's setting up cam timing on a 911 engine. Using our Digidix and our cam timing fixture and our other tools, it makes the chore very, very easy, very repeatable, and a very accurate procedure. And uh, all, in, all in all, those are things very, very important when it comes to setting up cams on these, on these engines. And certainly, when you have a more aggressive cam, the accuracy of a one tenth of one degree repeatability and accuracy on our Digidix becomes very, very critical. And also as you try to set the, the alignment of, a, of the pulley marks on the case or have to set up a, a tin type of a degree wheel on the pulley, it certainly makes this a quicker process using our Digidix, makes it much more of an accurate process and easier because you can actually see the numbers as they come up as opposed to looking at a at, at a, some sort of a wire type of a, a pointer or some other, some other system that's not going to be as accurate or as consistent. Hope that works well for you. Appreciate you tuning in. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.